photos of me taking photos, people. It's not a good look. Put them down. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the final of the World Open Billiards at the RACV Club here in Melbourne, Australia. watching the opening skirmishes of this uh, fascinating uh, battle between Devaj Haria from India and David Corsia from England who've won their way through to this final today with some, with some stellar billiards against some of the best billiards players in the world. The opening skirmishes in this game have just gone to Vaj's way and he's, uh, he, he's got himself in uh, with, the, with the first break of the game. Just setting himself up for uh, uh, a top of the table position in three or four shots. We've had some wonderful billiards here the last two days at the, here at the RECV club and also at the Yarraville club. Um, David Corsier in the final tonight made a 655 break yesterday. Uh, mate, incredibly, that was in a, a 45 minute match. Devajarir has come through a, a pretty tough side of the draw uh, to reach the final here. Uh, at uh, 25 years of age, he's one of the uh, real up and coming stars on the, on the billiard scene. And uh, he's a frequent visitor to Australia. Uh, he's been here a half a dozen times uh, to play in the uh, Australian National, Australian Open and the uh, Pacific International. Um, uh, but this is probably the, the best result he's had in Australia so far <coughs> to reach the final of this tournament. He's just lost position here by uh, leaving the red short on the, uh, on the previous in-off and uh, he's just now having to play some catch-up billions to, uh, to try and... Uh, establish his position. He's lost the white there, so uh, he'll be playing safe shortly and just trying to uh, 
put the balls behind the ball line to leave them safe for his opponent. So that's a very good safety. He's got the red into Bork. Just beautiful touch, and he's left his right in a safe, safe position near the, near the top cushion. So this uh, event, the Reed Furniture World Open Billiards, is being played in Australia for the first time. It's the warm-up event for the uh, World Billiards Championship, which starts tomorrow here at the RACV City Club in Melbourne. And a uh, tremendous opening shot there by Devajuri, <coughs> putting a long red. That's a really a, a snooker shot, but he's he's, he's played that uh, he's played that beautifully. Unlucky that he uh, for him that he's finished on the cushion, uh, leaving himself a difficult shot ne uh, next up. I think we've, fired it, uh, we've got a safety shot coming up here. Just uh, putting the balls out of position for David Corsier. David Corsier coming to the table now. <coughs> Not only did he make uh, 655 uh, yesterday in the uh, in the round robin section of the tournament, he's won his way through to the final here uh, with a 327 break in the quarter final. against Ryan Mears. Uh, that was trumped in the quarterfinals by Devajaria, who had a 398 break uh, against Peter Gilchrist. So uh, very, very good win there by Devajaria against Peter Gilchrist in the last eight, because in the last 16, Peter Gilchrist made a, uh, Peter Gilchrist from Singapore made a break of 522, which is uh, the, the, the second highest break. So, so far in this tournament, you know, we're only in the uh, the second day, and already we've had uh, you know two big breaks over 500, plenty of others in, uh, over 300 as well. So some great billiards being played here. Devash came through by beating uh, Peter Gilchrist 593 to 391 in the quarter final, and then the semi final, a very strong win against 18-time uh, world champion Mike Russell. Uh, Devash's breaks in that match were. 264, 136 and 110. He won that 665 to 336. And uh, David Corsier had a, a comfortable win in the quarterfinals against Ryan Mears, 695 to 293 with a 327 and 120. And in the semi-final, he accounted for the uh, Australian number one, an 18-time Australian champion, Matthew Bolton, 725 to 233 with 100, 186 and 164. So very, very solid break-making by these two, two great players. Contrasting styles between these two. Devage is, uh, is a, uh, an elegant uh, classical left-hander. Uh, very, very uh, beautiful, soft touch around the top of the table. David Corsier is a you know, wonderful player at all aspects of the game, but perhaps his, uh, his strength is his, in his recovery shots and his willingness to, uh, you know, to uh, as he says, chase the balls around the table uh, until they turn up into uh, a good position. Uh, but uh, he's a, a wonderful break builder with a high break of over 800 and uh, three world championships to his name. So. Uh, Definitely one of the one of the big favourites for the World Championship here this week. Okay, just having a little pause for thought here, uh, David. Uh, perhaps undecided as to what shot to play. Just playing a very nice little gathering shot there to uh, bunch the balls together on the side cushion, uh, with a view to uh, popping the white. Towards the spot and just trapping the red where he can uh, where he can work on that. Didn't quite get the the jaw on the red that he would have liked. He had to go in off it, but nonetheless, no trouble. He's got both balls in the open uh, with a choice of uh, a long in off off the white 
into the top pocket or, or uh, in off the red into the middle pocket. And the, the general principle in billiards is you, you, you play the longer ball first uh, because you have less control over where the object ball goes. And then having done that, you play the, uh, the, the easier shot into the middle pocket and then you can position that ball more precisely, which is exactly what David's doing here. Uh, now he's got these balls nicely for a, a cannon position, which will just bring the balls together at the top of the table. Yeah, he's played that uh, very nicely, landing on the outside of the red, bringing the white down near the spot. And uh, getting in uh, nice and close uh, at, at the top of the table in good position. He's, uh, he's quite a fast player, David Causey. He doesn't take a lot of time to sight the shot. <coughs> and uh, with, with the way the balls are running at the moment, his scoring is relatively slow because he's, he's playing open billiards. But uh, you know, when he gets down to the top of the table, uh, he's capable of scoring uh, very rapidly uh, at around about five minutes for 100 points. And that's evidenced pretty well by his uh, 522 in a 45 minute match uh, yesterday. 48. Which is going at about, um, around about seven, seven minutes to 100. <coughs> We've got some be beautiful camera angles here from our producer Dan Lynch from Cue Ball TV, who uh, is just a, uh, uh, here constantly monitoring the uh, co constantly monitoring the uh, the, the stream, uh, making sure that uh, he's bringing bringing you the viewer uh, the best possible view, close up where possible of uh, of what the players are doing in this this intricate and uh, delicate game of billiards. 70. 72. David has just uh, not quite got the position he wanted then. He, instead of potting the red, he uh, was forced to go uh, to go in off it and push it back up towards the centre of the table. But uh, no drama. He'll just pot this in the side and then run back down to the top of the table. Seventy-eight. 
80. Uh, same again this time. He hasn't quite got straight enough on the red, so he's just played a thin screw in off that one. He might have hit that a little bit hard. It's getting a little bit close to the ball line, but no. Beautiful touch by David there, and uh, he's just left that uh, a few centimetres outside the ball line, and uh, once again he'll pop this on the side and run back down towards the top of the table. And again, he, he wasn't quite able to leave that red for a pot, but uh, no problems at all. Just take it up again uh, to the middle of the table, and this time he'll he'll use the middle pockets to uh, middle pockets to 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 correct the position of the red, leave a cannon, and gather both balls down at the in the top uh, top part of the table. The applause you just heard there was uh, his hundred break, the first century in the final. But uh, I can assure you, it won't be the it, there won't be the last. These, these guys can really pour it on when they uh, when they get going. Uh, that's a very good shot. Very good shot there by uh, by David to leave a nice in off the white there, and uh, he continues on his merry way. Now, a difficult position, uh, David's left himself here with the three balls lined up along the top cushion. He might just have enough of uh, an angle to be able to... Ooh, not sure what happened then. I think he played a cushion first shot then, but uh, didn't, didn't catch it. So a lovely 121 break there by uh, David gives him, uh, you know, gives him first blood in, in the final. <coughs> Could be uh, a stroke of luck here for Devar Sharia. He has uh, missed it in off, uh, caught the draw, and just come back to complete a, a cannon worth two points. Uh, so uh, a stroke of luck there, and he's actually left himself in a quite a reasonable position to uh, to continue on. Quite straightforward cannon off uh, two cushions there, pushing the wide up uh, up the table, and then um, uh, leaving himself a pot red. Just gone a little bit far on that one, but uh, no, no problems at all. He'll be able to go in off this red and uh, bring the red in and out of walk. Uh, it's what's called a forcing shot, bringing the red up and down the, uh, the spots on the centre line of the table, which he's done uh, perfectly. And as long as the red is on that centre line, uh, uh, there's uh, in almost any position, uh, there's, there's a shot on. Very pretty short Jenny there by uh, Devage, just bringing the yellow out into play uh, more more towards the centre of the table. And uh, now he's going to play a, a cannon towards the red. 
a couple of different ways of playing this. And uh, he's just got a bit full on the red there. Um, leaving himself either a very thin in off the uh, white or possibly a run through off the yellow, I mean. Uh, we'll see what he does. Yeah, it's just run through that slowly. Trying to hold that ball out of book. Beautiful touch there by Devage. It's just stopped a couple of centimetres outside 16. the book line. Our referee for the uh, final here tonight is R.B. Ganesh from India. He's one of a number of uh, visiting referees that we have here, both from uh, from overseas and uh, and from interstate, uh, as well as our own Victorian referees, of course. Uh, we've got referees from Ireland, from England, from Scotland, from India, from New Zealand, and uh, for most of the uh, of the other states here in. Uh, in Australia, we've got uh, one referee from China who's uh, who's filling in here. All the visiting referees are staying here at the RACV club, as are the players. It's a beautiful venue, uh, not just for billiards, uh, with its magnificent billiards room, eight beautiful an antique all cock tables, but also it's a wonderful venue if you're staying here or if you're visiting the club. Uh, uh, it has uh, accommodation, 130 rooms, a variety of uh, of dining options here in the club. There's uh, half a dozen different restaurants uh, ranging from fine dining to, uh, to, to very casual dining. And uh, you know, if you're in Melbourne uh, in the, uh, over the next few days, you should come down to the uh, RACV club in 501 Burke Street in the city uh, and have a look at the billiards. It's, uh, it's really a, a sight worth to see. We've got the top players in the world are, are all here um, competing this week for the for the John Roberts Trophy, the oldest World Championship trophy in existence. It's been around since 1870. Older than the Claret Jug for the British Open Golf, it's older than the Wimbledon trophies. So a beautiful uh, silver trophy dating from 1870, which uh, is here at the RACV club on display. It's the first time it's left the United Kingdom to come out here for the championship this year. And uh, it's really been a, a coup for the organisers to be able to get that, uh, that beautiful trophy uh, out here. So uh, pretty quick scoring here by Devage. It seems he's only been at the table for a couple of minutes and already he's up to, uh, to 82. As I said before, beautiful uh, left-handed. He's got lovely touch, especially around the top. Uh, his screw shots are really, uh, really beautiful. If you watch how he cues on this shot, he's right behind the cue. His cue goes straight through. And... Uh, He's just got himself uh, into position for a cannon here. Not quite the position he would like, but it's uh, a, a good Nine. position nonetheless. This didn't quite go how we'd have wanted that one, but uh, nonetheless, he's just got a little soft screw cannon here, which uh, he'll play to leave uh, uh, and off, either off the, the red or the yellow. This is a pretty shot here, a screw shot with strong right hand side, spinning the ball along the uh, side cushion and just turning into the uh, turning into the pocket. He made a, a fool of me then because uh, he played it with left hand side, not right hand side. Just uh, doing that for positional purposes to uh, to throw the to throw the yellow a little bit wider. You sit there. Oh. Fifty-seven. 
60. So Devaj Haria passing at 100. What's, what's he on? Oh, he's on 60. Okay. Hi, Peter Tankard here, joining the fun. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, Dave. How's your week been? Well, I think you know you've been here. Pretty much the same as yours. Won one match, lost three. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> that's when, how it goes. Uh, when you're playing against these, uh, these top liners. Absolutely. Yeah. Who do you fancy in this final here, Peter? Well, I actually did call this final earlier oh, in the day. I do recall that. Because yeah, yeah. Um, mm. I get a bit of a sense that there's, we're at a time in billiards where there is a changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. um, Causey is kind of intergenerational. He's not 10 years younger than perhaps Gilchrist and Russell, mm. but not quite as young as... Oh, the youngest young guns. Well, kicker, wasn't was a that kicker, a miscue? Was a miscue. miscue, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a miscue. Okay, so uh, nice 64 there from Devaj. Just came unstuck on a on yes. a miscue. It just shows that that can happen to uh, to even the best of players. Oh, this is a little a slow screw there. Ooh, it's Ooh, just, it went, just uh, got ugly. Uh, I think he got it lucky actually. It won't matter. He's so good at creating things. He is. He's so yeah. creative. He's pushed that a little yeah, this far. Is, this is no snack. But none of that worries him. Yeah, he's just hit that beautifully. That wasn't an easy shot, that. No. It, it wasn't a square screw. He actually had to bring that back and uh, just pulled up a, a, a little bit short of perfect, but still an eminently recoverable position. Oh, I do that. Yep, that's ugly. <laughs> that's no, that's officially ugly. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Before it was just yeah, difficult, now yeah, it's officially yeah, ugly. Yeah. I think. He, but uh, what are you thinking? Two cushion cannon, three no, cushion I think cannon. Think safe, actually. You're right. Mm. Yes, with that previous shot, uh, I'm sure that uh, David was trying to push the red down on over the right hand top pocket, but uh, he's just caught it uh, a bit too full and, and put it in into no man's land. And he has got an option. He can play safe, but he's got quite an inviting cannon, yeah, which he's gone quite close to, but. Not, yep. uh, not quite close enough, but however, the way he's playing that it. shot, he's left the yellow on the uh, on the ball cushion, so a uh, bit of a shot to nothing, really, in uh, its yep. turn. David's decided to have a bit of a lash at that again. Have you seen a, the way he tilts his head as the ball goes round the angles? He does, yeah, yeah, it's fascinating to watch, really. Well, this is the first time I've seen him play uh, oh, really? in person here in Melbourne. You, Peter, yeah. have been over around the world watching uh, yes. for the last few years, so you've seen uh, David play. Plenty of times, but it is, yep. uh, it is always interesting to see, you know, uh, a He's new top-class yep. player. He is a force of nature. Yeah. Oh, look at this for a beautiful shot, will you? What a yes. beautiful what shot. A lovely Pick shot. one through his strong side, uh, along the ball cushion to uh, yep. you know, bring the white out into, uh, the yellow out into a beautiful uh, position. And that even got a reaction from the normally taciturn Corsia. Yes. So here. how old is uh, Twaj now? I think Twaj he's 25. 25, mm. yeah. And David? Um, I'm going to say 37, 38. Okay, okay. Younger than he uh, he looks then. Yeah, mm. he's uh, he's like a generation behind uh, that cohort that was uh, Chris Shutt, mm. Peter Gilchrist, mm. Mike Russell, Lee Largan. Yep. Uh, the, those um, Middlesbrough boys. Rocky Chapman fit into that group? I think he's more, I think Roxton was a little younger than Peter and Mike, yep. so somewhere in between them. But I mean, these guys are all products of the Teesside Boys yep. League. Uh, one stage, I think the last world championship in the UK, um, four, three of the four semi-finalists yep. were from the town Products. of Middlesbrough. Right. Population yep. 100,000. Yep. And to get there, they had eliminated some 20 <laughs> Indians, <Yep>. population 1.1 <laughs> yeah, 1 .1 yeah, billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it uh, just shows you the value yeah. of coaching from an early age yeah. uh, and, and the sharing of shots. This yeah. is a game that's built on knowledge yeah. and um, yeah. passed down, yeah. masters or apprentice, yeah. father to son sometimes, yeah. over a long period of time. Yeah. And um, 
that that Middlesbrough cohort is just unbelievable. Mm. They've won everything. I've, I've been to Middlesbrough to see uh, billiards actually, Peter, in uh, in the 70s actually. Uh, really? I went to the Western Social Club in Middlesbrough to see okay. the semi-finals and finals of the English Amateur. Oh, really? The English Amateur was won by Bob Close, a great, great. Yep. Uh, a great player from uh, from Middlesbrough. Oh, he was also Middlesbrough. Wasn't yeah, he? yeah, yeah. Okay. He lived uh, actually just uh, nearby uh, Middlesbrough, but uh, he played in at the Western Social Club. I think he was from Redcar, and uh, yeah, I saw some some great uh, players uh, of that era playing. Uh, Alf Nolan uh, was yep. playing. Uh, Herbert Beetham made the semi-final yes. there, and, and he uh, he won a uh, he, world he, he won a world amateur in, in 1960. Yeah. And uh, Bobby Close won, I think, his first English amateur because uh, he knocked off uh, Norman Dagley, um, who was uh, winning everything in those and days. And was Mark Wildman yeah. from Middlesbrough as well? Mark Wildman. I haven't met Mark Wildman. I, I'm not sure. Maybe I don't think he is. is. No, I think he's from, from the south. But I, c I could be wrong there. I really, really Jack don't Carnham know. was London, mm. wasn't he? Yeah. 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 So we're just seeing uh, Devage now. He's uh, reaping the fruits of that beautiful uh, run through and off that he played. Uh, he's in absolutely perfect position here. And he really has got the beautiful touch yes. at the top of the table. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's a very, very fine player. And uh, Well, he's got the high break today at 399. Yeah. And so his opponent had the high break yesterday with 665 or 55. Not, not quite right, Peter, because the Peter Gilchrist got a 522 today in the last 16, corrected. and uh, Mike Russell got a 520 in that round here. But those matches were played so in the I was morning wrong twice. Twice, yeah, yeah. But this, not, you're not always wrong, Peter. You're just you're not less than you're right. Not, you're not ever wrong. You just you're not. Yeah. Can I, can I just say I was poorly advised by Simon Fortune, <laughs> who's standing behind me. <laughs> I, I, I operate off, off the advice of others here, yeah, David, yeah, and I can't be right. responsible for, for anything that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> so here's, de, 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 here's <laughs> Devage going along beautifully. He's pushed the wide onto the top cushion uh, now knock. in a perfect postman's knock uh, position. But uh, these days people uh, don't like to play uh, too much postman's knock. It was very popular in other times. Bob Marshall, the great Australian champion, was a proponent of uh, Postman's Knock and uh, some of the great Indians have, have been proponents of uh, Postman's Knock. But uh, Geet Sethi. Geet Sethi being, being a prime example. But uh, <coughs> these days with the balk line rule, which we aren't playing in this, uh, in this event, um, Postman's Knock has tended to go out of favour because it's far more difficult to uh, to play that uh, form crossing. under the balk line crossing rule. And so also I think so they're, yeah. they're breaking down too often with uh, tight covers no, on the uh, second object ball. Nah, the, the great pace was not played, never, never got covers. Um, so what, that, what, what they do now is when they get it on the top cushion, their, their first aim is to try and knock it away and just get it back up a little bit closer towards the spot. So you watch Devage here uh, in a couple of shots he'll, he'll be trying to just knock the yellow ball you know five or six inches uh, away beautiful straight screw back there bringing the, his cue ball back off the side cushion uh, for another little cannon he's just grazed that oh no he missed, missed it. it missed it missed it okay that was a pretty delicate shot that and uh, Nice break there from uh, Devage. He's just leading by about uh, 40 points in this 90-minute um, final. So we've got about an hour to go. And uh, anybody's game, of course, at this early stage. We've had some good crowds in here this uh, week, Peter, and this is probably the biggest crowd that we've had for the yeah. final here. Uh, well, Dan I, know, might, uh, I can't get a seat down <coughs> there. And okay, so Dan Lynch might just to have come pan around and, and show us uh, the audience sitting here at the RECV watching, uh, watching this match.
but um, yeah, a lot of excitement here in the in the RACV club for uh, for this event being here. The members have really got behind the event. They've been buying yes. tickets. They've been coming along to watch. Um, a lot of them are playing in the event. There's uh, there's probably half a dozen uh, RACV club members, including the resident professional here, Robbie Faldari, uh, who uh, who have played in the event. And you just got a, 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 a snippet of the crowd there. We've got seating installed on four sides of this table. We can fit a nice uh, crowd of about 67, 60 or 70 people down in the pit area and uh, another 30 or 40 watching from uh, uh, a slightly higher area uh, on the side of the table. Yeah, quite a good crowd up there in that area too. So we've probably got 50 or 60 watching this match. Um, and of course, when we get into the, the serious stuff with the oh, world, oh, another miscue! With the, well, I just think he got a double kiss there, Peter. No, uh, he got a miscue, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So good. Good. Thanks, Dan. Good shots of the crowd there. A few empty seats, but uh, that was uh, that was a surprise, I have to say. Three. Now, you wouldn't see mm. two miscues in a game of billiards. Well, it depends typically. who's playing, Peter. If you and if I are I'm playing, playing well, I, I did <laughs> there's plenty of miscues. I did miscue against Robbie. <laughs> but, I mean, at this standard, it's pretty so unusual. Yeah, yeah. Look at that for wonderful pace, pace control. control. They took the words right out of my mouth there, Peter. Mm. He's... Just, just left himself slightly out of position there, but played a beautiful uh, recovery shot. A couple of thin cannons here. And it's just, that's a beautiful shot. Just nudge that. It may play a thin cannon here. Uh, it, might, it might end up playing three of these. Oh, that's beautiful. Each that's time he's just spreading these balls a little bit further apart until eventually he'll leave himself a shot that isn't quite so thin and enable him to get on the red to pot it and uh, that's what he's done now. So very nice little sequence there from Devage from a, a quite tricky position. He didn't try and recover position in one shot. He knew before he even started that it would take three thin cannons to, uh, to recover his position and he's done that. And uh, Peter, you're staying here at the RACV this week? Fantastic. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Only because you made it mandatory, David. <laughs> 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 no, it's, um, it's been fantastic. Mm. Uh, mm. We've had uh, universal mm. acclaim for the rooms. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, some people, I think, have reported this is the best place they've ever stayed in. So... Um, yeah, I think that's very very pleasing for us to hear. There's no doubt that this is a wonderful club. Uh, I have to say I'm a member here, but uh, you know, the, the reason I'm a member is it is such a wonderful club. And, uh, so you're not uh, like Groucho Marx then? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Who no. famously said, yeah, I'm yeah. not prepared to be a member of any club that'll have me. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there's a good opportunity here for Devar Sharia to... Uh, to uh, establish a bit of a lead and uh, in, in this game he's, uh, he's he's got himself in here he'll want a, a jaw here just to no he didn't quite get would've the jaw he would have liked yeah yeah that would be right but uh, I don't think he'll worry about that he's a wo wonderful long straight potter and he'll actually be looking to uh, to screw this back if a few I'm any inches. judge yeah he'll need to screw it back about six inches or so to get uh, to get the position he wants. Yeah, difficult shot that, and 
he, uh, he wasn't able to pull it off. Looks like there's a pause. Old David goes out to okay. regroup. Okay, so that's good. That, that Dan is just showing us, uh, our producer Dan Lynch is just showing us uh, a crowd shot there of a uh, you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good turn up. Eleven. Okay, we've resumed after the uh, after that little pause. David Pitt with you uh, in commentary. With uh, Devar Sharia leading uh, 208 to 169. And I'm joined in commentary by Alex Kay, who's a member here at the RACV Club. Welcome, Alex. Thank you for having me. And uh, 
it's nice to be able to come up here and uh, get a different perspective on the game. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, so you've uh, you've been here all week, Alex, watching the, the matches? I have. Um, well, I've just come back from playing over the other side at Yarraville and uh, enjoyed that. But uh, now we're watching uh, the good players and... Uh, it's a very interesting match so it far. It is, yeah, it is. It's been some great... Uh, what is the score? Some great vintage uh, so far. Up here. So... Uh, maybe it calls you back in. Just uh, bridging the gap now, there's only about 20 points of difference. So with 46 minutes to go, we're at the half minute, the halfway mark of this match. And uh, obviously with the score so close, it's anybody's game. So the next, uh, the next 20 minutes or so, we're really... Uh, tell the story of this match. David's left himself a, a less than ideal position here. He's playing a screw cannon. Didn't quite get the red full as he would have liked, but uh, he's yeah, got, got a, a bit nice of a lucky kiss there. Nice. It was like when I played you yesterday, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you know all about lucky Something kisses. Like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I got all of them. Got, got a bit of luck, but that's, uh, yeah. that's what the game's about. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, when you... These players, yep. that, uh, they generally do have their luck like a lot of other people mm. but mm. they just seem to mm. be able to manipulate mm. that ball around to yep. Yep. as he's done here yep. and it's a beautiful shot. So uh, Horace Lindham said that uh, uh, billiards is 50% uh, skill 25% nerves and 25% luck and uh, you know sometimes it it feels when you're playing that it's more like about 90% luck but that's yep. not the, that's not really the case so uh, Nice little shot by David, nice a touch shot. Just, nice drop just, cannon. Uh, just dropping the... Uh, uh, just dropping the red... Uh, pulls that over, not thing. quite yeah. where he wanted it, but yeah. um, he's still in good shape yeah. there to uh, yeah. uh, create a in off the red and then uh, drop cannon after that, yeah. not quite. So I haven't been out in the room... Uh, Alex, it looks like there's a pretty good crowd in there. Uh, they're watching. There must be 60 or so people uh, out there having a look at the game at the moment. That's right. Hmm. But, uh, they're enjoying themselves as much as oh. I am, and hmm. uh, it's a pleasure to watch these people hmm. play. Hmm. It really is. Hmm. But the amount of time that they put in to get to the level that they've got to hmm. is just immense. And I, I, th I think David actually... Um, he practices something like three hours a day. He, uh, it's right? interesting, David. He's uh, got a full-time job as a, uh, bar a, as, a uh, as a bar manager. Yeah, I think his manager. channel is in the um, hotel business. And uh, yeah, he he goes to uh, to practice in the morning on his way to work. So he he puts in a couple of hours practice each morning before he goes to work. Yes, and uh, he's out every morning practicing, yes, from what yes, I understand. Yeah, that's right. yeah well, that's uh, the, the number of hours you need to put in to get good at this game is, uh, like, you know, like most sports, you have to put in the hours to, uh, to reap the reward. He's just got a nice little break there where the, the white ball didn't go in. He, he's going to try and play a shot to oh, rescue it here. Uh, He's not good. It's very difficult to keep that one out it was, as it was so close to the pocket. He's now actually got a bit of a problem because uh, so it's a little bit narrow to me. He's still got a shot on there. Yeah, that's bring a it up shot. over Bork. And and uh, that beautifully, you know, to, to bring it into Bork. Yeah. Yeah, double Borking now and mm. make it very hard for him. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that little uh, break of 62 there. It's just uh, put David Causier in front, uh, 43 minutes to go, and uh, advantage Causier in the sense that uh, Devashiri has to make a decision as to what to do here, whether he just plays safe with his ball or yeah. tries to attack his double ball and score off it. Uh, there's no obvious shot that he can play to, uh, to score here. His best hope might be just to try and disturb the balls because uh, David's left himself a very simple uh, position to pot the red or play a fine in off. Can I have I think a go find he's, No, I think he's just going to try and knock the yellow into the corner. No, no, he's uh, quite hard. So he's... Uh, uh, that's a bad result because he's, David's got a, a, a simple in off and now the white is uh, out in the open for, for him to... Uh, 
for him to develop. Just slightly awkward here using the uh, the long the long rest and uh, the extension on his cue, but uh, it was a straightforward shot. He was just able to knock that in, bring the red out into play, and. Uh, We'll see how he develops this from here. One of the interesting things about billiards, Alex, is that there's, as you know, there's such a variety of shots. He's got about six or seven shots that he could play here, yeah. and uh, different players have uh, have different choices as to what they that what they might do. So he's elected to follow that in. Uh, yes, uh, that's, a, that's a nice shot because now it sits himself Lovely up shot. for a drop cannon to uh, to bring himself back uh, straight back down to the top. Same. Hopefully we get back in the top of the table with that shot and uh, he's got a reasonable result out of that. I mean, he's got a good result there, going on to the, uh, onto the far side of the red, but he's left both balls in front of him, which is what you always want to do, and uh, he's got this nicely. Play the cross loser. Border in good position for a mm. uh, mm. in off field. Mm. Bring it up and down the table. Mm. So it's uh, wonderful uh, for everybody here in Melbourne to be able to come along and watch this uh, village here at the RACV Club. But it, uh, it doesn't just happen, it's, uh, it's a result of uh, a lot of support from uh, different groups. The RACV club itself is uh, right behind the championship, offering uh, the use of their room for the, for the games, uh, the opportunity for the players and referees to stay here at the club. Uh, the, they're supporting us in terms of functions and, uh, and in other ways. And uh, of course our sponsors. Uh, have uh, really given tremendous uh, support to the event. They've Reed Furniture, the uh, sponsor of the, uh, uh, the naming rights sponsor of the World Open, and, uh, and other sponsors that I'll mention in a minute. I, um, I was just having a chat with someone today about the what the RACV have wow. done, yeah. and uh, and their promotion of the Q Sports. It's, it's been terrific. Ideally, I think this is something that maybe could be looked at down the track that maybe get this event over here in a three or four year period and have it. <laughs> it's something to think about. It definitely is. You're getting a bit ahead of yourself uh, there, Alex, but uh, yeah, definitely. This is such a great venue. All the players have been uh, you know, full of praise for the, the accommodation and the playing conditions. Uh, as, as I was saying just before, it's. Uh, it's our sponsors that are, have enabled it to do, th do them. Sport and Recreation Victoria, the Victorian government has been a, a major uh, sponsor of the event. That's right. The, uh, the RACV Club, of course. Uh, the naming rights sponsor here, uh, Reed Furniture. Um, Endeavour Life Care, who are the uh, sponsors of the, the, the World Billiards Championship, which is, follows on from this World Open. Just got too straight here. Uh, David, and he's going to have to play. Oh, that's a really nice shot. That a difficult shot to, to play that screw shot off the top cushion. But uh, being a you know the top pro that he is, he's made it look easy. Play a run through. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, he's not oh, too bad because he's just himself in off the white. So that's actually uh, not as bad as it, it should be. Referee R B Ganesh just bringing the red back down and putting it on the spot. He's enjoying himself. He's having a ball out here from India staying in this uh, first class accommodation and uh, you know watching you know first class billiards all day with the best seat in the house because the referee you know, does have the best seat in the house he sees everything that the players are doing yes it certainly is uh, the best seat in the house yeah, isn't it yeah, yeah. you can sit here and you can uh, look at the different angles and mm -hmm. uh, he, he's right behind the player so we can see up close uh, exactly what they're doing yeah. it's a it's a wonderful way to learn the game it's uh, that's, that's how I started. Uh, well, I was recommended when I was young and starting in the game. They said, "Oh, you should you know, do some refereeing. Try and referee for the top players, and you'll learn. You'll learn a lot." Well, I hope everyone out in YouTube mm. land is mm. enjoying mm. our commentary. Today. No, here we are on the on the World Billiards YouTube channel. Uh, 
Can we get a, see a count of uh, our viewership at the moment, Dan? Okay, yep, so 130 tuning in. Let's not forget it's uh, very early in the morning in the U in the UK, so a few people probably watching billiards while they have breakfast. Oh, I'm quite sure there will be. They'll, they'll be enjoying it. They're very, yeah. uh, very proactive mm. on the billiards mm. over mm. there. Mm. Certainly like to see it uh, get to that stage mm. here in Australia. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. But he's, uh, he's working that up nicely now into the top of the yeah. table and uh, mm. he's just got himself an ideal position for the pot and then he can start working the ball for the, uh, for the cannon and keep top of the table. He's got a beautiful position there. 77. Just knocking, knocking the white slightly off centre there, which is uh, the preferred position for uh, for these top players of, of top of the table. They don't want to have the the, the object ball uh, directly in line with the red. They just like it to be an inch or two either side of that of that line, um, which just makes the uh, p floating white uh, game feasible. 83. 85. He's, uh, he's still keeping that good position and he's with the white <coughs> over as far as it is now. He's yeah. just got a little bit of room that he can uh, he can work that back possibly. No, yeah, he's just pushed it out and knocked it up there. Yeah. Oh, he's well, just pulled up. Yeah. The amount of side he had on that just to maintain mm. that shot mm. where it did mm. it. Uh, mm. It's wonderful to bring it well, out and about. Yeah. There we go. Oh, just pushing the white off the top cushion there to leave it in off. A slow, couple of slow shots. It'll take you another <coughs> three or four shots to, uh, yes, to bring these uh, back to the... It's on a 97 uh, break now. To the top of the table. 99, that's, uh, that's the hundred. There's a big crowd at the moment, too, yeah. out there watching. Yes. Us. I think that's David's second century of the match. Gives him a lead now of just over 100, and uh, yes, pretty handy time to be doing it with 34 minutes uh, yep. left in the game. You know, another, uh, even another 50 or so, but certainly another 100 would. Uh, would start to make it very difficult for Devage to uh, to get back into this game. So he's he's, he's certainly building a, a good momentum now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the balls exactly yeah. where he wants them, nicely controlled. Drop cannon coming up in off the wide if he needed to. He's not in any great trouble there, and uh, bring the red right over the other side. Lovely pop. <coughs> Shot that um, and kind of play in off yeah, up and down again, up over the centre. It's no, gone a little bit too far past okay. the centre pocket. But, uh, play a long Jenny. The game he played before um, against Matthew Bolton, he had uh, in three visits to the table, he had three shots at long Jennies and missed each one of them. That's in. Uh that's incredible, Alex, for these top liners. They would uh, usually miss about one long journey a month. So, oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, that's extraordinary. Right. Yeah. So it's just the playing on these uh, these tables has been an absolute eye opener. We, as pennant players, and. Uh, other games we play in the Australian Open and Pacific International. Um, the tables, the cloths aren't as quick and the cushions aren't as quick. Yeah, yeah. And you have to adjust very, very quickly to the conditions. Yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of players that uh, are coming in there and having a match uh, will struggle with it. But uh, a lot of the overseas players don't have that issue because they're playing on those conditions 
every time, mm. just about that they're playing. Well, that's not quite right. They've, but they have been full of praise for, uh, you know, for the conditions here at uh, at the RECV, which uh, uh, the tables here are maintained, of course, by uh, Alcox, uh, another of our uh, most important sponsors. Um, who uh, have uh, looked after the tables here at the RECV Club for 115 years mm -hmm. and uh, they do a beautiful job of setting up the tables for championship play as we've seen with the big breaks that have already been made in only uh, two, to two days highlighted by 622 by David Corsier yesterday a 500 and Yes. Uh, sorry, 655 and a 522 by Peter Gilchrist today so uh, another 500 by Mike, Mike Russell, so they're already uh, you know, early days, but they're pounding in uh, some pretty big breaks here. And uh, we expect to see plenty more of it with the World Championship, which starts tomorrow, Tuesday, oh, and runs through, until, uh, runs through until Saturday. I'm quite sure there'll be a, a lot of people out looking at that tomorrow. There'll be yeah. some wonderful matches coming up. Mm. There's some very fine talent from around the world. There's a lot of... Um, Players from different parts, and um, they're going to have some pretty tough competition. These guys, mm. Mm. pretty tough competition. You're playing, aren't you? I am playing tomorrow. Yes, I I, I, my first opponent is David Cruz. Oh, so, uh, well, we're watching you know. him now, so I think he might have his measure. <laughs> I'm hoping he might be a bit tired after tonight, because I think we're on at ten o'clock in the morning. So uh, anyway, we'll see what happens there. Well, I know what's going to happen there, but. Uh, no, no, so I'll enjoy the game. It's always fantastic to play against these uh, top liners. You know, you can enjoy those games just as much as, uh, Absolutely. as playing Absolutely. against a lesser player. And it's a thrill to, you know, to play against a world champion. Uh, a thrill that's not really possible in other sports. You can't, you know, you can't just rock up and uh, get a game against Roger Federer. Um, right. You know, and you can't, you can't play uh, cricket against, you know, Steve Smith and uh, Pat Cummings. But uh, you know, the ordinary club player by entering uh, in some of these tournaments can actually get a go with the world champion. And I've played, uh, you know, two or three of them in a time. So, well, we're back uh, to Peter Tankard is coming for a visit and is watching what's going on as well. And he's now uh, he's now on 174 break and uh, he's got very very good control of, of the ball at the moment. And, uh, He's doing exactly as he wants. So uh, highly likely, you know, with this uh, break building as it is, up now to 177, that uh, this is, is going to be the match-winning break, you know. That's starting to get towards the point now where uh, time will become a bit of an issue for uh, Devage, but uh, just as importantly, uh, he's got a bit of an issue about getting on the table and, uh, and scoring some points because uh, David isn't going to be... Uh, isn't going to be giving up, giving up this table easily. Absolutely, uh, he's just controlling that very, very nicely yeah, at the yeah. moment. Beautiful control. Yeah. Can you just hit mute for a second. Just hit the mute button. Oh, it's not on. We'll just go off here. Ninety-two. Yes, I'm back in commentary because I can't actually get near the table. There's people oh, everywhere. Oh, welcome, can't see well, the welcome again, Peter Tanker, it's joining a, us again. That's a better view here, here, David. It's a great view here. It's yeah. a wonderful view. We've got uh, three monitors in front of us, so uh, we can we can see uh, the view from each of the cameras. Uh, there's nobody standing in our way. 200 miles now. For, uh, for Corsia, so uh, really solid break in the in the you know the middle part of this game. Yeah, just uh, 
that's where a lot of matches are won, isn't it? In the uh, yeah. beginning of the second half, he uh, went to the toilet about halfway through. And whether that was the call of nature or regrouping his thoughts, we can't know. But he's come back firing on all cylinders. Got such a lovely pace control yeah, on that drop yeah, cannon, yeah. but I think it's because he hits it so accurately. David, he's got you know, a wide range of shots and uh, and uh, you know, great great cue ball control, and he's not afraid to uh, to give them the tonk, give them, give them a tonk if the situation. He does give them it. a tonk. He's giving them less of a tonk now oh. than he used to. Yeah, yeah. So thanks but for uh, uh, chatting along, Peter. It's been great to be here, and I'm now going to hand over to Grant Medley to. Uh, to just to give us some expert insights into the into the game of billiards. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Dave. Cheers. If you're wondering how long it takes to develop this expertise, the answer is several decades. They say it's a 20-year apprenticeship, but uh, in fact. Um, In fact, uh, David uh, is uh, practicing every day at his local steel mill. He's allowed to use the workers club, the steel mill workers club, as a practice table, and he puts in two hours every morning between the hours of 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. before the workers arrive, and that's his home table. And I understand he maintains it and recloths it as necessary. Joined by Grant Meadley, who won the plate event today, I've just heard. Good evening, Peter. Yes, I did. It was a fantastic, well done, Grant. fantastic day at the Arrowville Club. Uh, played uh, Josh Burns in the final. Josh had a fantastic day out there at Yarraville. He had, had a 140. 140 break, and uh, in his next match he had a 98 break and covered himself. Um, so Josh was in fine form. I think the nerves got to him in the final. It was a, it was a crucial match for him. You've got a little more experience. He's only 21, I think. Yeah, early 20s, Josh. And, uh, you know, he's, he's making a uh, great improvement in the game and, and he's consistently knocking in some 100 breaks now. So He seems to have lost that stutter that he had in his cue action. Yeah, look, it is evident every now and then with certain shots, but uh, he's, he's definitely got rid of the old yips, and uh, he's, he's fast improving, Josh. Well, he could still hit the ball. I mean, it was a strange cue action, but he was still able to hit the ball. But it was a definite stutter on Zalubri, wasn't it? Yeah, look, I think that creeps into everyone's game uh, every now and then. Um, but for Josh, he's uh, definitely got it under control, and he's uh, compiling some decent breaks now, which is good to see. A demonstrable shake of the head by David when he looked at that red, just didn't like it. Yeah. Yeah, Dave's obviously been in devastating form this, this uh, last few days and uh, he's continued in the final. And he can't decide on this no. one. He's really agonising about it. He never... He's usually such a, a first-sighter and a quick thinker. Yeah. Oh, well. I mean, that wasn't an easy shot. He had to calculate exactly the right amount of pace and stun on that. Hasn't worked out perfectly, but uh, he's very creative. Yeah, he's probably the most creative player on the circuit, I dare say. He's uh, very unorthodox so. and uh, he gets the balls atop his own way. And doesn't feel like he has to slavishly keep them there. No, that, that's it. Oh, it's just checked up. Minutes 22 minutes left. Now it's still theoretically possible. Isn't it is, yeah. Grant. Um, you know, we've got uh, 270 in the difference. If you score at six minutes 20 seconds atop, it's still theoretically possible, but it gets harder and harder. More pressure goes on. You're behind. You have to make every shot. 
Yeah, but Javaji is such a cool and uh, calculated character. He's, if he gets the balls to, to top there, he, he does score quite quickly. Mm. So Javaji will be looking to get to top fairly soon with a 270 deficit. You might see his pace pick up here as he tries to... Uh, Get his rhythm going. And recoup the large deficit. Yeah. Very tall character, Javaj. He's, uh, he's got the longest legs I've ever seen on a human being. He's, uh, he's all leg and he's got a fantastic uh, loose grip. I'm told he's six foot five. I think Peter Gilchrist has one quarter of an inch on him. Yeah, they did a back-to-back -back measure, didn't they? And you were in that. I was in that measurement. Yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. had a we had a back-to-back -back measurement at the. And you uh, were six four. I'm just just a touch under six four, and uh, yeah, <coughs> Javaj just picked me by an inch, and then obviously the uh, the giant that is Mr. Gilchrist, towering six foot six. Yep. Huge advantage to be able to reach past the blue spot. I'm not sure that you guys even know what a rest is. It is, Peter. I won't make any short yeah. jokes while you're in the commentary booth. I appreciate that, Grant. So that, I'll remember that, that, that little kindness. So David's ball is just hanging over the hole here. Um, obviously, after a few pot reds here, Javaz will be looking to get that ball back into play in a usable position. So tomorrow we've got the start of the uh, the World Championships, Peter. A lot of work's gone into uh, the preparation of these titles. A lot Absolutely. of uh, a lot of people involved in the event. A lot of hours spent. Um, obviously, with with uh, the new uh, governing body, the World Billiards. Obviously, Billiards Australia, uh, major sponsors. Look how tight he's got that behind yeah. the spot. But he has, in fact, kind of limited his approach now. He really has to take a couple of losers yeah. it's to get a red pot. Interesting note, Javaj, he always spots at the back of the D for his, his hazards here. Hmm. I've noticed that the last two times he's, he's had ball in hand. <coughs> yeah, it's... Um, oh, that's perfect. Look, it only took him one shot to get that right over the middle pocket. Right over. So this is about as tight at top as you're going to get them. Yeah. So we've got two forty odd point deficit here uh, with 90 minutes left. It's very doable in, with the balls yep. in this position. What do you What do you think it takes? Uh, how long do you think it takes to make 100 at top if you're Devaj Harrier? Um, look, I think he's just as quick as uh, the majority of the, the quicker players, such as uh, Dave and Matthew, who, who do score quite quickly at top, yes. around a six minute mark per 100. Um, I think Gervais is just a tad slower, he'd probably be about seven minute mark. He doesn't think about the shots much, so we'll see how he goes here. Perhaps he doesn't have to. It's not very often these uh, players are put under a lot of pressure to score quickly. So um, this will be the first time I've actually seen him put under a little bit of pressure. So that's going quite high there. So he's going to come behind this yeah. for a recovery cannon with the uh, left hand side, check side. Yeah. So behind the yellow, kick it back up. Didn't get as much of the yellow as he wanted yeah. there. I think he landed so too high on that side. last shot. And yeah. uh, Couldn't get it all. But now he's got the correcting cannon, push it back behind the spot. Wick fine off the red and leave a pot red. So these are tough little shots. Very difficult to land high on the red, so he's played that right-hand side to roll off the red to leave high. It hasn't worked, has it? No. Might have to go around the table. <coughs> so as we can see, under the pressure here, he's uh, had to go around the table once, which yep. isn't ideal for top of the table play. Uh, luckily, he's landed uh, quite straight on the red. Could be pretty useful from tomorrow onwards, though, couldn't it? It is, with the uh, balk line crossing rule coming into play. For those viewers that aren't aware, the ball crossing rule is a, a rule that's been in for a, a few years now. Basically, it, 
um, requires players to cross the balk line uh, in between 80 and 100 points of each 100. It was really introduced to break up the repetitive nature of this top of the table play, wasn't it? So that you couldn't just park here and create perhaps a bit more viewer interest, another challenge for the players to try and... Uh, yeah, and, and it does make the, the break negotiate. quite interesting, you know, once the 80 mark does hit, to see how the players do negotiate the ball line crossing. There's a couple of different approaches. Uh, most players tend to leave themselves low on a, on a red and um, go around the balk off, off the two or off three cushions. Pot. Yeah. 69. How did you find the conditions at Yarraville yesterday? Similar to this or different? Um, I was at uh, RACV yesterday and, and played at Yarraville today. Um, uh, th th they weren't too bad at Yarraville actually. The tables are all looked after out there by the members. We had a great time out there today. We had 18 players for the plate event and um, everyone had a lot of fun. You had more fun. Oh look, yeah, I did. I, you know, I was, I was lucky enough to play um, young Joshua from Queensland, who's a great little yep. player too. He's uh, Josh Hands. Yeah, he's got a yep. good little cue action, and um, yeah, he's going to be a good little player. He sure is. He can see a half ball already. He can see a half ball already. Yeah. yeah. Very uh, enthusiastic young young kid, and um, very respectful to the players. Always comes up and says good day, shakes your hand. It's uh, great to see uh, some young kids playing the game. Yeah. So mums and dads, if your kids are addicted to Fortnite and you want to get them into something else, give them a billiards addiction. Yes, it's uh, not the worst addiction out there for sports. It's, uh, oh, no. it's a cheap sport to play. Yep, takes you to some great places, does, you meet some yeah. lovely people. May have kicked that yellow up just a bit too high there. Yeah. You can negotiate it, get it back below the spot. You need to be, the way he's played that, you need to be very confident of your pace control. He's come right across the line that he needed to get there and he stopped exactly in the right spot. Yeah, that's no, a really good shot do. there. Yeah, that's a great shot. These shots look really easy uh, to probably some of you as a hundred have played with this. I guarantee you you've actually went to your local club and, and tried to uh, duplicate some of these shots that these players are playing. Uh, yeah. you, you'll find it very difficult. Yeah. It's so precise and so minute. A fraction of a millimetre in a Q-tip position yeah. makes all the difference. The other, the other difference, I think, between billiards and snooker too is that every shot is a unique shot. The relationships between the balls all change because there are only three balls. Yeah. So in snooker, you've really only got to control the cue ball. You've got to hit an object ball, but that goes into the pocket. Yeah. So you don't worry about that after, after it's gone into the pocket. You don't need to control that. But here, he's just played a cannon where he's actually got to position all three balls. He, no, nothing's gone into the pocket, so he's had to actually figure out the final leaving position of all three balls. Yeah, and obviously the, the uh, close proximity of yep. all three balls too. You, you have to be well aware of what the, the balls are going to do once they've hit a cushion yep. or another 17. ball. Um, there's obviously chances of smothers, etc. in billiards. Yep. So he's actually thinking in three dimensions here. Yeah. So he's leaving himself on the line here. Um, it's quite difficult because the yellow is close to the potting angle for the red, so he doesn't want to push it up too much higher. So Grant, do you think there's a type of person or a type of mind, if you like, which is suited to billiards? Do you think it's a mathematical type thing or a spatial thing? Or a that, that, that was a tough shot there, Pete. Oh. Um, did he graze that yellow? Yeah, I think he did graze the yellow there. I think... Uh, I think a creative mind more than anything, Peter. It's, okay. it's uh, definitely an artistic. Type yeah, thing. it's it's. Um, I think you have to be uh, a little bit creative in this game. Uh, mathematics, yes, they, they definitely helps.
when you, you, you've got to kind of be able to rotate 3D objects in your yeah, mind, don't yeah. you? You've got to be able to figure out the relationships and the leaves of the balls. What follows what? So we're up to 131 with this break. We've got uh, 140 points well, to we've difference. we've got a match on. We certainly do. We've got 12 minutes left, so it's um, plenty of time there. Yep. Well, we said it was theoretically possible, yep. and he's halfway there. So he'll be looking at pushing David's ball back below the spot here. So what's in David's mind while he's sitting watching this? Miss, miss, miss? Well, we were just talking about this today. There's not many sports in the world where you actually cannot you know, um, do much when your opponent's doing the damage. It's, uh, you just have to sit there and watch, uh, keep your mind focused, and uh, just wait for your next opportunity. So what do you think about when you're sitting there? Are you following the balls, or are you meditating, or are you looking away? Or Oh, look, uh, for me personally, I, I, I try not to watch what the opponent's doing, if I can help it. Um, it obviously depends on who you're playing to. Um, you know, if you haven't had your hand on the table, if you are playing a good player, it, it's, it, it can be handy to watch them and see how they're, um, you know, utilising the, the pace of the table, etc., and, and playing certain shots. Um, me personally, I tend not to watch Peter. So he's losing the opponent's ball a little bit there, so it'll be interesting to see how he regains the uh, opponent's ball back below the spot here. So he's effectively got to get on the left-hand side of the table as we look at it and play a cannon coming back would be the usual way, isn't it? Yeah. But not yet. Well, he wants a little so bit of angle on this thread here. Yep. Don't think he's so got yeah, it, which he's is just stood up a little he's, head it's waggle and no, not liking it. It's quite straight, so you might like just B. play a little bit safe here. Okay. That did not work out. No. So he'll have to break up top of the table to score here. So just switch camera angles there to see what he's faced with. So he's leaving himself a little in off the yellow here. And uh, back to open play. Crucial shots for break building, the shots that he's just played there to leave yeah. the in-offs are uh, very important and something the top players do quite well. And I think it actually separates the uh, top players from the rest of us, Peter. Yes. Their ability to produce these little in-offs for their next shots. Yes. That control in the open. Yeah. So 106 points to get. I don't think he can get there, Grant, unless he gets them back to top. Um, if he's left playing in the open. He's still got nine minutes there. Time. Uh, plenty of time. In the open? No, nine, minutes well, of nine minutes of losers? Looking where the balls I are, so. I don't think he's got that many shots to uh, get them back to top there. He's, uh, no, but assuming you can't get them to top, yeah. does he have enough time? Not at open play, no. 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 So really that has to be the priority, doesn't it? He's yeah. really got to find... Uh, oh, so he wants this red to, needs to come straighten out. up a little needs bit. to come out. Okay, it's out, but it's not good. So does he drag this, does he? Yep, he drag the check. That's not ideal. Well, so short Jenny, in off the red, find a red pot and leave a drop cannon. Yeah. That looks to be the sequence, doesn't it? The yellow's in position already. Step one. I'm going to say he's got two minutes, two minutes to get the top of the table. If, if, if he can't get the top of the table in two minutes, Peter, it's going to be a hard task to... Yep. So he pushes red down towards the billiard spot area now to yep. leave drop cannon. And hopefully... And it all comes down to this shot. Down to this shot, yeah. What the position, what the leave is. I heard a um, great commentator once call these a mini drop cannon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah earlier short today. Drop cannon. And that hasn't worked out. That's a cl cover, classical cover. And this. Okay. That's a great break, but unfortunately, uh, 
pretty hard to uh, negotiate back to the table here. Well, yes. Now, I don't think David <laughs> wants to disturb his ball stuck on the rail there. He's got to, he'd have to... Oh, sorry, wrong yeah. ball. Two. So I think they will just be keeping it simple here initially, just uh, making sure the game is uh, unreachable. That's a great part. The curious part is I don't think you'll slow down. You know, there some players could be accused of getting in front and slowing down, but that isn't his natural rhythm. His natural rhythm is to keep them moving. Yeah, and, and he's obviously the, the, the best exponent in the world of, of, of fast play. I mean, some of the scores that he reaches in certain time frames are just unbelievable. Yeah. Statistically, he is the fastest player in the world with a, an average of all first-class matches of 820 points an hour. Yeah. Can you guess who the second fastest is? Oh, from memory, I know Matthew Bolton Correct. heard that uh, he had that Correct. title at one stage. And Correct. And Matt's about six, yeah. 620 to 640 yeah, an hour. Yeah, big difference, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do like my stats, Peter. I, I do. I know you do, Grant, and I know you're very good at them. So, um, yeah, so David's, uh, and just his style of play, you know, he's a first sider, first hitter, yeah. one feather, and the more he's in, the faster he goes. So David's left himself of a drop cannon here and see how he goes. Yep. Kind of a reverse drop cannon, isn't it? He's got the yep. red as the high ball and the opponent as the low ball. <coughs> um, hard to see the angle from there. Yeah, I think he's okay. Yep. Just got to get a result here and uh, leave it in off the white, possibly. No, okay, that won't be happening. It's a tricky, uh, tricky, tricky pot rear on this, pot. this table. Look at the timber work on that table there, Peter. Isn't I know it it's unbelievable. Tulip wood. Yeah, it's one of a kind. 140 years old, all cocks. They just do beautiful work. Yeah, tricky pot uh -oh. red there. <coughs> yeah. So we're still not in. over. Four no. minutes. Mm. It's a, there's a point that you get to where there's only one solution, and it's a... Nursery cannons. Nursery cannons. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's the, the last resort. Yeah, that, that's correct. And uh, unfortunately, there's not many exponents of the nursery yeah, cannon these not days. Really you can play them. Yeah. I dare say uh, Dave will be uh, quite capable of playing those through cannons. He's got fantastic I dare say. touch. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're thinking the match, the, the streaming clock is not the official clock. So we're thinking there might be six minutes and 50 seconds left now. Yeah. Uh, no, we, 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 we tend not to run off the PC clocks that, that aren't that accurate. So um, we're going to rely on the, uh, the clock inside the arena. Um, so just dis disregard the clock on the screen there. Either way. Yep. Right. Okay, yes, so there's a toilet break. It's yeah. not recorded in there. So there may still be time. 14. Yeah. Yeah. So we just, um, one of the officials is just heading inside to get an Confirm update. Confirm the yeah, time. The clock. time remaining, because obviously it's a crucial part of the game. And uh, if there are indeed eight minutes or so left, uh, it's still reachable target. He can't miss again now, can he? No. Nah. Any miss, and it's good night. He to pull up just a little bit. So. Needs to get inside the red to the yellow. Yeah. So this is a direct method at the top of the table here. He's yep. tried to push that yellow ball below the spot. <coughs> um, not quite the best, but he'd be happy with that. It's still a, in a usable position here. Yep, and he's coming in on the good side of the table, so yep. he's coming in on the side the yellow is. So he gets a chance to push it further yeah, behind the spot at some stage. 
So back in the top, underneath the red, underneath the uh, yellow. Seven. Leaving the pot red. Even smarter. Yep. And uh, be using an angle here to push yellow back below the spot. That Bolton calls this one the correcting cannon, which I think is a nice, yeah. nice name for it. It's a, it's a quite a useful shot to have in your arsenal. The uh, that shot. So he needs this to slow down a little bit. He's uh, got the angle there to come underneath the yellow again. So just have a look at the cue ball. What the cue ball's doing. He's got. A little bit of side on that. So I think we're going to have an update soon. So we've got three and a half minutes left on the clock. 47. Uh, okay, 70, 61, 61 points, points to get. Still possible. It is possible, yeah. 50. Yeah, there was a toilet break that David took, which wasn't recorded. So in the there we are, ladies and gentlemen. We've just been updated. There's roughly uh, three minutes three left minutes now. Left. And uh, Gervais is still at the table. He's still 56 points behind with three minutes left. He can, he can see the clock there, so he knows what needs to be done. Yeah. So he's motoring. Not wasting any time. Thought no. about reaching for his chalk, decided against it. Yeah, he's definitely motoring. He, he knows he's got a task ahead here and yeah. uh, he's put his head down and he's, he's really 63. focusing on the ball here. 65. This feels like the final of the uh, World Cup cricket. 67. And the Ashes, third test. So he's he's lost. David, to get? Yeah, he's lost David's ball a bit here, but he's got a uh, reasonably easy pot here to keep the break going. And it'll be interesting to see what shot he plays here. If, uh, Dan, can we see the clock? Seventy-five. Seventy-seven. So we're just trying to zoom in on the clock here. Uh, yeah. That's a straight pot there. He's gonna. Uh, he might roll this one in. Okay. He does. So he's played a six shot there and uh, gone back to the fork. Thirty-one to get. One minute twenty seconds. So he's gonna make the uh, yellow ball travel here a bit, Peter. Yeah, that's gonna waste time. So he wants this to speed up a touch. That's too short. Yeah. Cannon maybe. off the cushion. Yeah, be right a little bit of luck on the red here. Contact yep. doesn't come below the red too much, like that. Like that. And so now they're spread apart. It's going to take more time to recover them to back together. But he's, so he's, gonna, he's, he's on gonna the take pot yellow. Yeah. Look at that. He's just said, "I'm going to take reds, reds, reds." So let's see how he goes <coughs> here. He's definitely a great potter. Oh. That's a great pot. Um, come up too high, got to go in off. That's fine. 92. Grandstand finish here, Peter, I think. Mm. So. Well, he doesn't want to be playing losers. Pots are faster. Yeah. I can see David in the background here just yeah. looking at the clock and... Uh, yeah, these these are too slow. He needs to get onto the red spot. Drill a couple of stun pots. Again, he'll have to come around off two cushions, three cushions. Well, they say, and the crowd goes wild. That's a great crowd, Mr. Peter. Yeah, it is a great crowd. Yeah. 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 Ye
Thank you. 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 So thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. We're off to a presentation, a couple of quiet drinks, from a bit of a nosh. So that sounds good to me. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks thank for you, the coverage. Damage. Cheers.